certainly the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. And what a blessing it is to see all of you. Let's go right to the word. Isaiah 55, 11 through 13. Isaiah 55, 11 through 13. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32. Isaiah 55, John 8. Glory to God. We certainly bless the Lord this morning. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. We'll be sharing from the New King James Version of the Scripture. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. John chapter 8 verse 31 and 32. Because it is the gospel lesson, let's stand as we share these two verses. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated in his presence. We continue our journey in our series, Victorious Faith. I want to focus our attention this morning on the second message in our series, the evidence of faith. The evidence of faith. My prayer is that through this journey, we will not know the mechanics of faith only, but indeed experience through discipline the movement in faith for kingdom manifestation. We will not be denied. That I believe that we will experience kingdom manifestation when the earth has an expectation, we put a demand for kingdom manifestation. There is a manifestation of kingdom power and authority when you and I expect it. Let us remember, for we walk by faith and not by sight. I want you to know your faith will see you through. Amen. Amen. Let's say that with me. My faith, My faith will see me through. We must during these days of uncertainty have within us a resolve to believe God. To have a resolve is to come to a definite or earnest decision. A determination to follow a certain course of action. One must have the resolve that in the trying times of life, you're going to make it. You will go through and you will come out. Your going through will bring you out and you will be better than you were before. You have to have the resolve that the challenge, the crisis, or the conflict will not defeat you. You are victorious. While reflecting on our time together last week in the word, I thought about how God moved miraculously in a time of expectation in our ministry. It was one, one, it was during the season that God used expectation to birth 
one of the mantras of this ministry, one of the, as said, contemporary thought, one of the hashtags of this ministry. Um, as my son Patrick says, I have a whole almanac of hashtags. Hallelujah, I still got a few more to birth out of me. <laughs> we had a great, tremendous time of revival. We were on 513 in our 513 location. And it was the last night of revival, and God was moving tremendously in the midst of his people. And the evangelist, Bishop Young, went to the window. And you know, we don't say um, open the window in the country. We say heist up that window. He heisted up the window. It was about quarter to the 11 at night. And he hollered at the land next to the church. And he spoke to the land and the house and the people that were in it and spoke the words that that property would belong to the church that was on a Friday night. The week later, I believe, I pulled up to the church. And when I pulled up to the church, there was a man standing in front of the house Pastor Denise drove up beside me. And I got out the car and I asked the man, what are you doing? He said, I'm putting a for sale sign in the property. I said, take it up. And he said, why? I said, because it belongs to us. We're going to get by that property. He said, you don't even know how much it matters. I said, it don't matter. I said, take the sale sign. I said, who is the, who is the realtor? He said, Linda Braun. I said, give me your number. Pastor Denise was sitting right there, standing there with me. I called her. I said, um, I want to talk to you because we want to, to get the property. She said, when, I said, she said, well, when can you meet me? I said, when can you meet me? <laughs> she said, I'll meet you when you I said, meet me tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. I called the board of directors and said, I need you all to meet me at the church at 8 o'clock. Pastor Denise and I went in the, in the sanctuary and we begin to talk. She's here. You remember that, Denise? And we begin to talk. I said, do, we, do, do you see what the Lord has done? And we begin to praise the Lord, the two of us. And that's when the Lord spoke to me. We're not anxious. We're just expecting. <laughs> Pastor Denise was sitting there. Right I said, oh, Denise, we're not, we're not anxious. We're just expecting. The next morning, we met with the board, met with the lady. We signed the papers and brought the property. And the Lord reminded me, as I said to you on last week, that the Lord said, bring them back to what I've done. The same God that did that is the same God that moves when you and I have great expectations. And when we expect him to move, he will move. You don't have to be anxious, but just expect him to do what he has promised. Your faith is not in the promise. Your faith is for the process. You don't have to beg for a promise that already is yours. You don't have to moan over a promise that's already been declared and given to you. You just need to praise God that the promise that has been given to you will manifest. You just need to thank God for the faith that he will give you to take you through the process. Can anybody praise him for the faith for the process? No, 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 no. Don't patty cake me. Praise him for the faith for the process. Say with me, I'm not anxious. I'm just expecting. Now, is anybody expecting something from the Lord? Anybody expecting God to do something? Then you owe God a praise right there. Marcus, give me about 10 more minutes. I got to do a little work today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I dare you praise him right there. 
I don't want you to get no help from the organist. I need you to use your voice. Open up your mouth. Because your praise has great power to bring the thing to pass. Hallelujah. I've learned something about faith. When I worship, it activates everything in me to believe God the more. That's why my thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah will not be silenced by the circumstance, the crisis, or the conflict. I'm believing God, and my praise reminds me that it's just around the corner. Do I have anybody that's expecting and got a praise? Do I have anybody in the room that's expecting and got some worship within you? I dare you to release it out of your belly right now. Come on, Zion. You are pregnant with possibilities. I said you're pregnant with possibilities. I said you're pregnant with dreams. I command it to be activated in you. Let your worship stir up your anointing. Let it come alive within your belly now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Open up your mouth and give him praise. Yeman sata. Roshele man sotaya. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm expecting something. I know they think we're crazy. They say, there they go again. But guess what? Every round goes, goes higher. Yeah, I got a new devil, but I got a new anointing. Hallelujah. Don't you dare be afraid of the battle because the greater one is on the inside of you. Can I get somebody that believes and said, I'm expecting? Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing. I feel something breaking right there. I said I feel something breaking right here. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to help somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Zion. You know it. You know what to do. Hallelujah. Activate it in your being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm expecting some things. Pastor Tanya, I'm expecting something for the house. Hallelujah. I'm expecting some things overseer. Hallelujah. I saw something this morning in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to share with you what I saw. Hallelujah. Brother John, I was sitting in praying. Hallelujah. And I saw the building filled. And then I saw it expand. I saw it triple. And I saw it filled with people. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to me, can you believe me for this? I said, yeah, I can. Hallelujah. He said, can you expect it? I said, yes, I can. He said, then it's already done. Hallelujah. He said, you don't have to look at the empty seats. Look at the filled seats that I showed you. Some of you saw some things in the spirit. Some of you got dreams and visions. Stop looking at your now and look at the picture that God gave you. Look at what God said to you and believe that it will come to pass for you. It's a great place to give him a great praise. Every distraction, every doubt be removed from you now. Hallelujah. Every distraction or doubt, every hindrance that keeps you from moving forward in the things that God has declared for you, we counsel it in the name of Jesus. There is a fresh wind blowing your way, a fresh sound of the Holy Ghost flowing in your direction. If you believe it, it's a great place to give him praise. Whoa! Glory to God. I feel it now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whoosha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, you can praise him because the enemy said you wouldn't get this far. But look where you are right now. I feel about, that's about, about 10 people right there. When the enemy said you wouldn't make it this far, look where you are. 
and the same God that brought you this far is the next same God that's empowering you for the next leg of the journey. I hear God saying, some of you getting ready to go to the next leg of your journey. It's greater. It's more powerful. God is with you. Doors are opening. Ways are being made. There are people on the left and the right that's going to help you. If you believe it, give them a great praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I feel this thing. Hallelujah. I feel this thing. I'm expecting. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried. I'm not frustrated. I'm just going to praise till manifestation come. It's on the way. It's on the way. Your breakthrough, your deliverance, your healing. It's here now. Can you praise him for it? Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I'm going to move and finish my message. I'm going to try, Tori. I'm going to try. But you have to understand the level of your worship. Hallelujah. Let God know the level of your expectation. The level of your worship is an indication of your faith level. And I say, be it unto you according to your faith. And if you're expecting something, there ought to be a great level of worship, hallelujah, and a great level of faith because God's saying, put a demand on me with your worship and with your faith and watch the portals of glory open over your life. Get a man, sire. Glory to God. I said the, glow, the portal is open and I felt that. So I, I felt that. Rondette, I felt that in the spirit. Actually, I felt that in the spirit. There's a portal open over your life. Hallelujah. Which the enemy said would not be open. But God said, I put something in motion for you. And I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. And the door is open. The way is made for you, daughter. Hallelujah. And watch my hand move mightily. I'm going to restore. Hallelujah. And replenish. And give you increase in this season. Somebody bless God with her right there. Oh. I got I to gotta go forward more. Jesus, hallelujah. That's expectation. We can, ex oh, that's a good place to praise him. Marcus, don't play. I need you to open up your mouth and praise him. Those of you that can pray in the spirit, release it right there. Yeah. Come on, let it come out. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Atamaya. Ilelomo shatanaya. Isidi akanaya. Utanamansai. Hallelujah. Come on, help me, son, right there. Evidence. Evidence. Yeah. Go on, that's it. That's what we came to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Evidence is that which tends to prove or disapprove something. It's the ground for belief or proof. Evidence is something that makes plain or clear an indication or sign. Evidence is the data presented to a court or jury in proof of the facts in issue and which may include the testimony of witnesses, records, documents, or objects. Faith, just like everything else, has an origin. Faith's origin is the word of God. 
Too many believers are trying to manufacture faith outside the word. In the same way that you cannot produce a carrot without a carrot seed, you cannot produce faith without the word. The word is the seed. Faith is not something we decide to possess. People say, I'm going to believe God. But that's not really a good statement to make. I cannot make a decision to believe. Living spiritual faith is a result. It's not a decision. It is the outcome of abiding in the word of God. How many believers are fooled into believing that they possess faith when they in reality struggle with it? It doesn't mean that you don't have any faith at all. It means that you're not using what you've been given. You have not activated it. I believe the scripture in Romans chapter 12 tells us that each man has been given the measure of faith. Where are you in the word? What verses do you have to back up what you say you believe? You cannot provide the verse that supports what you believe that you do not have spiritual faith. You need the word if you desire spiritual faith. That's the kind of faith that will move mountains in your life. I didn't say you had to know a whole lot of word, but you just need to know some word. If you know one verse, it will work for you. Can't get no help here. The sole source of faith is the word of God. Faith is not based on, on your circumstances, your good deeds, or other genuine or otherwise. It is genuine biblical faith, and it is exclusively found in the word of God. Fundamentally, fundamentally you must be in agreement with the fact that you cannot acquire faith without the word of God. You will have to remain focused on the word. As opposed to your circumstances. You have to remain focused on your word, on the word, as opposed to your circumstances, if you're going to live by faith. Fixing your eyes on the unseen requires a steady diet of the word of God. You see, faith, Tico, has been misunderstood due to the improper use of the word of God. In the same way that we misuse a chair by standing on it or sitting on it only on two legs, we can misuse the word. People have faith in a chair's ability to hold them because they're of their experience with the chair. If every time you sit in a chair, it would collapse under your weight, then you would soon lose your faith in the chair. A sturdy chair will not just collapse under a person. The person must cause the collapse by using the chair in a way that it was not designed to be used. My, my, my. People have progressively lost faith in the word because of improper use. Many times we use the word as a rule book instead of a love letter. Then we misuse, then we, this misuses a, 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 uh, 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 and hinders our faith. Instead of reading to be in relationship with Jesus, we read because we falsely believe that it will keep us in his good graces. And so it becomes a book of regulations rather than a love letter. And while somebody is growing and reading the same, how can two people read the same stuff and get different results? That's because some people are bound 
by what they are reading because they're, they, they see and view the scripture as a rule books that can damn them to hell if they don't dot every I and cross every T. While I believe there is no excuse for us not keeping the word, the word is not a rule book. The word is a love letter that says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, it will change and empower your life for greater living and prosperity. Y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. It is his word that does that for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word was designed to enable us, not for us to try to live up to it. As we encounter various trials of life, we must be convinced that faith is the victory that will overcome any situation we come up against. We must also be convinced that we need the word in order to produce faith in our lives. For every trial we encounter. We also need a steady intake of the word of God. We need a steady intake on the word of God on the trial we are encountering. We need to discover what God has promised regarding that trial that we're experiencing. And we need to plant the seed. I don't want a plant a, to plant a carriage seed when I want tomatoes. I can't get tomatoes from a carrot seed. So I've got to find, this is why we must become familiar with the scriptures. This is why the, the Paul wrote to Timothy, said, study to show thyself to prove unto God a work with that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, rightly dividing the word of truth is not just knowing Greek or Hebrew. It is to know what is truth as we understand the difference between the old and the new covenants. One of the greatest challenges of misusing the word is that we have not come to know who we really are based on the scripture. Amen. So we try to follow old covenant law and we are under New Testament grace. It does not mean that the law has been done away with, but you must know your position. The old covenant was the law. You had to keep it. And the new covenant is receiving a life that will keep you. The old covenant operated by fear and the new covenant operates by faith. The old covenant is do, do, do. The new covenant is done, done, done. The old covenant says that thou shall not, thou shall not. And the new covenant says, I will, I will, I will. The old covenant was about labor and works. And the new covenant is about grace and faith. The old covenant was a full of demand. And this new covenant is full of supply, just to name a few. I believe with you, for exceptional, bountifulness, blessing, and breakthrough. I believe that you are entering into that season as you grow in the word of God. Of blessings and breakthrough. Breakthrough is a point in time when every spiritual, mental resistance is overcome. Once and for all. And that you are positioned for your next level of living. I declare that you are at a breakthrough point in your life. Many of you, the spirit of the Lord brought you here this morning to bring you into a breakthrough point in your life. Where every spiritual and mental resistance is overcome. Hallelujah. And you are positioned now for your next level of living. God has set you up. Do not be distracted from God positioning you for your next level of living. Hallelujah. You understand something. Mental breakthrough only not occurs at the point of manifestation, but at the point of obedient faith that establishes an unwavering course of action. So as you receive the word 
and the word is hid in your heart, it begins now to cause that breakthrough to happen in your thought. Hallelujah. And it begins now to help you to begin to navigate yourself onto an upward trajectory of living. I'm almost finished. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? And the truth shall what? And let's get it together again. The truth shall make you what? Mental breakthrough is the victory before the victory. Mental breakthrough is the victory before the victory. The spiritual conviction which settles all doubt once and for all and rejoicing is the result. Psalms 37 and 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The scripture reveal two classes of believers. Those who will choose carnality and those who will choose spirituality. God loves us all, but can only give the victorious life to those who choose to live by faith. We must know that the evidence of victorious faith is the word of God. To know is important. We must know the word of God. To know is to comprehend with clarity and the conviction of feeling as factual truth is established and fixed in our heart fixed in our mind with an intimate, unwavering confidence that gives birth to a distinctive behavior. When you know what you know, nobody can move you. Do I have anybody like that? I don't care what you say. I know what I know. And my behavior may appear to be arrogant to you, it's not arrogance in this case, it's confidence. Because I know what I know. God wants you to come to a place in his word that you know what you know and you take your stance, which will order your behavior. I can't get no help here. Knowing is the step beyond believing because it's settled knowledge that has passed the persuasion test. Nobody's trying to persuade you to believe. You've come to a place in your will that nothing is going to shake you. You can say like the word, heaven and earth can pass away, but his word will stand forever. I know what I know. In the scope of faith, there is a place of full persuasion that is beyond the place called uh, beyond the place of believing called knowing where there's an absence of doubt and distractions concerning the promises and the character of God. I challenge you this Lord's day, don't stop short of knowing because when you do, you make your home in the land of tolerance. When you live in tolerance, it's living outside of God's best for you. You don't have to live in tolerance acres when God has called you to knowing estates. Many believers are living, living in tolerance land because they tolerate everything. And this is just the way it's going to be. Well, praise the Lord. God knows what's my, God knows my heart. And yeah, I'm doing my best to make it in. I'm climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. 
When it rains, it pours. Storm clouds arise, billows. Why are you singing those songs that are not biblical in narrative? That's not what the scripture teaches us. I know it has some good church to it. But it's not what the scriptures teach us. Now, do you want to still have good church or do you want to obey his word? I, I, I like good church, but I'd rather get godly results than just have good church. I can't get Elder Jackson. You with me this morning? I'd rather just have some good. It, 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 may, not, it may not please everybody. People used to say to me, I don't, I don't know if I like that, that music that King Life sings because it, it ain't churchy enough for me. It, it, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to be churchy enough. Find yourself a church that sing the good old gospel song. But just make sure when you're singing the good old gospel song, you're getting gospel results. Because after you have rocked and clapped your hands and waved your hands, if you don't get results, you just having good time and not moving forward. But give me something that's going to cause my faith to soar. Give me something that focuses not on my challenge, but on my God. Can't get no help here now. I know I'm getting it. I know I ruffled some feathers, but it's all right. Hallelujah. I ain't big as I was, but I still can hold my own ground now. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Stop living in tolerance land. Stop tolerating what God never told you to tolerate. You don't have to tolerate it. Why are you tolerating it? Who told you you had to tolerate it? Pray for me. Pray that I'll be, I just make it, you know, I got all these trials and tribulations. Pray for me. Just pray for me, church. Pray for me. What are you going to do? When are you going to activate what God's given you to move you from here to there? When will you stop allowing the trial to tolerate you and you take control of the trial? Tolerance is just outside of God's best for you. The enemy loves when you live in tolerance because he knows that you are not experienced God's best. You're not living your best life in the land of tolerance. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper. In the thing for which I sent it. All increase of life within his love come by his word. As human response gives place for his blessing. When received, God's word is a promise that will never be barren. The power in his word will always fulfill the promise of his word. The promise in his word will always fulfill the promise of his word. We never need wonder how faith is developed or how fruitfulness is realized. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, by receiving it wholeheartedly and humbly. Pastor Richard, I had to repent because I recently had to realize I was trying to control an area of my life that God had already handled. And I realized that it was a great hindrance to my personal faith 
because I was trying to dictate how. And God was saying, you've got to leave the how to me. Stop trying to tell me how. Stop trying to work the plan when you're believing me for it. Leave the how to me. I'm challenging somebody in this room who said, I've quoted the scriptures. I've been praying. I've been waiting. When is my manifestation? Stop trying to make it work your way and leave the how to almighty God. Leave the how to him. Listen, your faith is moving mountains for you. We need never wonder how faith is developed or how fruitfulness is realized. Faith comes by hearing God's word. Fruitfulness is guaranteed. It is a byproduct. Whether for the salvation of the soul or for the provision of the disciples' need, God's word cannot be barren or fruitless. God's word cannot be barren or fruitless. His own life power is within his word. His word is the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's an awareness. It's health to all that finds it. And it's medicine to all their flesh. Listen, when you, my brother, you, my sisters, are walking in the word. You are equipped to overcome a situation that's contrary to the truth. You are not persuaded, dismayed, or tossed by false doctrine. Listen, you will begin to hear in the next two to three years False doctrine rise on an accelerated rate. You will find those who once walked in the truth start walking in declaring false doctrine because they are looking for a new hype in kingdom. And they feel like if I present something new, I will gain a crowd. And trust me, there will be those that will follow false doctrine. But when you are rooted and grounded in the evidence of faith, the word of God, you will not be tossed by every wind of doctrine. There will be an acceleration of false doctrine in the land. This is why you've got to get rooted and grounded in the word. This is why you must also now begin to rehearse in your home with your children foundational truth because this accelerated rate will not just be in the college level, but it will now come into the middle and high school levels. You might not want to take this word of, word of knowledge, but I hear God clearly. It's, come, it's already started, but it's now going to hit it in a greater level. And this is why you and I must begin to empower our children with the truth. This is why the church must begin to rise and prepare itself to begin to build its own schools. So we can educate our children in foundational truth. Hallelujah. And teach them that they are in the world, but they're not of the world. Hallelujah. There's some foundation. We, we cannot ignore this. Hear me. Hear me clearly. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. You got, we have to educate our children. You can listen. When you are equipped in the word, you have the evidence of the word. You can break free of limitations and stereotypes that rob you of your potential. When you are rooted in the word and have the evidence of faith, you can endure persecution without disruption in your peace. You will make the transition from a carnal believer 
to a spiritual believer. You, have a, you will have an unwavering expectation of possessing the promises of God. You will have the boldness to obey God even without fully understanding because you have the evidence of faith. And when you have his word, his word works for you. Amen. Expectation and evidence ushers you into the place of victory. I've got my, I have an expectation of faith. I've got the evidence of his word with faith. And when expectation and evidence come together, I can now move to the, sec the third leg, which I'm not going to preach today, which is the effort of faith, which is the fight of faith. Because there is a warring that I can do in faith that will bring me victory. Bishop, what am I warring against? Come back next week, I'll tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody stand. I'm going to pray for you and turn it back to pastor. I said, Lord, you gave me this message. This series. And I said, Lord, the last two years, I probably preached more series on faith. Pastor Dorsey than I've ever preached in my life. I almost struggled preaching this series. And the Lord, as I said to you earlier, he said, bring them back to what I've said. Bring them back to kingdom principles. Because I want to do something for them. And they've got to know it's my hand doing it. Many of you are going to begin to ex have experiences in the word of God that you cannot deny. Supernatural experiences. Many of you under my sound of my voice are going to have supernatural experiences because when you begin to walk in faith, when you begin to, to have the expectation, the evidence, and the effort of faith, the supernatural power of God begins to move in your direction. God's going to move for you. God's going to move for you. Many of you will begin to understand why you have to begin now with, with all effort to war in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to release a word that's in my, my heart and then I'm going to be done. I'm going to pray with uplifted hands. Father, thank you for every man, woman, boy and girl under the sound of my voice. Those that are here in the sanctuary, those that are joining us in the virtual sanctuary. Thank you, Lord, that it is with loving kindness you have drawn us. We thank you, Lord, for your life changing word we are at awe of your word father we have tasted of your goodness we've tasted of your promises and we are at awe of you God this morning let your faith be activated let their faith be activated within them as they believe your word. As they allow your word to feed their spirit man. As they begin to go forth and move from 
one level of faith to another level of faith, from one level of victory to another level of victory, from another level of grace to another level of grace. Father, we thank you now for what your word will do through and in their lives. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice. Lord, let your promises be manifested now as they walk in the faith process of life. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. The victory that belongs to them in every area of their lives in the wonderful matchless name of Jesus. My soul says amen and we give you abundant praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Pastor Eric is preparing to come. I was getting ready to look at my notes this morning in the sanctuary. My worship was going on and I saw my brother and sister-in-law come in and I saw Brother Rollins' assistant Angie come in and I heard the Lord speak to me. All of you who own your own businesses stand. I speak to this season in your businesses that there will continually be an acceleration in your business that every need will be met financially that resources will flow to you now in this season that you will continue to dream and you will not be denied in this season I called for expansion I heard the Lord say as you see it it comes to pass as you see it it comes to pass hallelujah contracts after contracts will come your direction doors will open supernaturally to you in this season hallelujah speak the word of God over your business plans and vision Speak to your business plans and vision. Speak and declare the word of the Lord. Speak in your establishment. Declare the word of the Lord and it shall come to pass. You shall prosper in this season as you honor the Lord. Now all over the building, everybody, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. You may be seated. Do not downsize because of the current circumstance. Hear God. For many of you, he will say expand when it looks like you should downsize. But obey him, stretch out, and you shall see the hand of the Lord move mightily in your midst. Praise the name of the Lord. Clap your hands all over the building and give God praise. Come on, give him a great praise. 